I mean, the basic reason it's a problem is workload. And all that time you take doing that is time you're not spending with the children, talking, playing, helping them to learn. So the good stuff. It, 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 it is really problematic to tie people up in pointless workload. The second thing I'd say is that um, you end up with a situation where people are making a judgment like this child's in the 30 to 50 age band, this child's in 40 to 60. But actually the difference between a group of kids in the 30 to 50 band is often bigger than the difference between a kid in the 30 to 50 and the 40 to 60. So it doesn't help us to think about the children's learning when we use development matters like that. So it's both time consuming and unhelpful. And I think what I'd add to that is that we get fixated on this kind of next step approach. What's the next step in learning? Well, when you're in the flow with children, you really do need to think about the next step. So if you're playing with them, you're thinking, okay, what's next now? Do I uh, expand on that idea? Do I encourage that child to look at this in a different way? Do I get the iPad over so we can look at that leaf through the iPad microscope? You're always thinking of the next step. But when people spend hours of time writing down next steps for say 30 kids in their class the next thing you know you've got two or three next steps for every child that's 90 things to think about it's madness what we should be thinking about is what, what, what's our big picture for what we want kids to learn here what what does good progress through the reception year what are the milestones there what what do we want in terms of children developing their gross motor skills, their fine motor skills, their understanding of directional language, so that we introduce teaching handwriting at just the right point for children, the big picture.